Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Architect Moira and yes, this is a voiceover because this video is actually part 2 for my board exam requirements for the PRC stuff. So I uploaded part 1 which was like the requirements you need to get from like the government or your university. Well, this video part 2 will be all about how to fill out your Archi logbook because I know that it can be a very confusing and daunting task for a lot of us. So yeah, I am here to help you out. So Anyways, without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. Woo! Finally, the last requirement that you need to pass is your logbook of diversified experience. Ito yung pinaka nakaka stress and pinaka crucial din na kailangan mo mapas para makapag board exam ka. Actually, before yung logbook, um, nagbebenta sila ng physical copy of it. Actually, nakabili pa ako before. Pero kasi since nga nag-pandemic, um, naglabas na sila ng online logbook. So, pwede mo nalang i-download. Naka-PDF naman siya. Tapos, dun mo nalang i-fill up. Pero take note na kahit uh, kinuha mo na online yung logbook, kailangan mo pa rin siya i-print na hard copy. Tapos, yun yung ipapasa mo sa PRC. So, yun. Kuha ka na ng copy online. Pero, by the way, yung mga physical logbooks, yung yun, yung binabenta na before, I think they still accept it naman. If dong ka nakapag-sulat-sulat ng log mo. So, because you need to take note of everything that you do, my advice is that really from your first day of work pa lang, ilagay mo na sa notebook mo. Like, hindi kailangan sa logbook agad. Like, sa separate notebook or sa planner mo, ganyan. Lahat ng tasks na ginagawa mo throughout the day and isummarize mo na siya per day. Don't worry, you spent 2 hours um doing CAD. Ganyan. You spent 5 hours sa meeting. Ganyan. So, ayun, take note mo na agad para rin hindi ka masyado nang huhula kapag kailangan mo na i-fill up yung logbook mo. And my tip is, gawa ka na ng Excel file para dun mo ilalagay lahat ng activities mo, ganyan, tapos malagay mo na yung date, ganyan, and makompute mo siya ng tama. And lucky for you guys, gumawa na ako ng Excel file and I will be linking the Google Drive link down below. Pwede nyo siya i-download and customize nyo na to your own activities, ganyan, kung ano yung mga ginawa nyo. Pero at least naka- indicate na doon kung ilang hours yung kailangan mo and magko-compute na rin siya on its own. Hopefully, gumana yung link. Yun yung ginamit ko and I was applying for the board exams and it really helped me na ma-organize lahat nung kailangan ko ilagay sa logbook. And then, another tip is to categorize your activities kasi sa logbook, mayroon tayong six categories or fields of practice na kung saan pwede under yung activity na yun. So, like, the first one is architectural designing or drafting, structural conceptualization, planning, and the like. So, that you need 30% of that or 1,152 credit hours. Ganun. So, basically, yun nga is designing. Then, the second one is preparation of contract documents, specs writing, clerk of works, etc. That's 25%. So, basically, ito is for me, like, paggawa ng mga documents ganyan. So, like, if may pinaprepare sa inyo, mga CB or mga hover letter. I don't know, ganon. Uh, pwede siya under na to. Next is field superintendence, project management, administration, and the like. This is 15%. Uh, dito ko nilagay yung mga meetings namin, ganon, kapag mga site visit din, ganyan. The fourth one is technical, economic, financial, feasibility studies, redesign, etc. That's 10%. Yung nilagay ko dito is mga more of research, ganon, mga pre-design nga na kailangan mong hanapin. Mga code checking din dito ko nilagay. Next is electrical, electronic, sanitary, etc. etc. 10%. Basically, this is MEPS. So, anything that you do related to MEPS, uh, you can put it down here. And the last is architectural interiors or space planning etc. That's 10%. Uh, yun, mga space planning kapag gagawa ako ng PowerPoint, ganun, dito ko nilalagay. So, hopefully, that helps you out in what kinds of activities that you need to put under each category. It's very subjective naman. Kasi malamang hindi naman tayo lahat pare-pareho ng ginagawa for work. Yun, bahala ka na mag-arrange, ganyan. So, ayun, di ba? Meron ka na yung notebook or planner mo kasi mo nilalagay yung daily activities mo and then you have your Excel file na ready na ma-i-input mo doon kung ano man ginagawa mo. So, my advice is to at least update the Excel file mga once a month, ganon, para rin hindi ka na mahihirapan mag-take down or mag-compute later on. Pero let's be realistic, 
halos lahat naman tayo hindi ginagawa yun. Kasi nakakatamad din naman yung once a month. Minsan kapag weekend kasi gusto mo na lang magpahinga. So, madalas nangyayari is like literally before the board exam mo pa lang siya inaasikaso talaga and pinafinalize and everything. So, okay lang din naman yun. If you're gonna do that, make sure to allot like one to two days to accomplish your logbook para makomplete siya and mafinalize na talaga siya. Just to make sure then na uh, tama yung mga nilista mo and yung mga computations mo. Then, another tip is to add 10% more sa mga hours na maa-accomplish mo. So, yung 2 years kasi na maa-accomplish mo is equivalent to 3,840 hours. So, yun yung minimum na kailangan mo. Pero, mas maganda na meron kang sobra doon, ba? Diba? So, mga around 4,000 hours, I think, yung maganda. And, most likely naman, mag- giging 4,000 hours din na talaga yung render mong time, you know, with overtime and all. So, I'm gonna show an example of a page, ganyan. Para lang makita nyo yung format, pero yung format of how you list down, like, the projects and the activities is not very particular naman. Like, hindi naman sila sobrang strict about it. Pero ako, yung ginawa ko is, una is project name and then naka-parenthesis na lang doon yung project location para rin uh, mas short na. Then, ayun, nalagay mo activities mo, tapos nalagay mo yung hours per category, tapos kailangan din alam mo yung dates, kung kailan mo siya stenart and kailan mo siya natapos. Kung mag-alala, hindi naman nila i-check sobra na sure ka ba na March 8 ka nagsimula. Hindi <laughs> naman ganun. If hindi mo na matandaan yung exact date, maybe you can do like Search mo na lang yung start of the week during that year. Anong date ba yun? Parang ganun. And also, the number of hours don't have to be equivalent to 8 hours times X days. Kasi if like 8 hours kayo sa office per day. Kasi impossible naman na isang buong araw, isang activity lang yung ginagawa mo. Like, iba-iba talaga tayo. And yun nga, may overtime hours pa. So, okay lang yun na hindi siya sakto na 8 hours per day. Maganda rin is to leave like a blank row uh, after each project para lang mas organized din. My advice also is that the less pages you have, the better. Like, kung kaya nyo siyang iksian, iksian nyo na. I don't know, because I feel like if you make it too long, it just gets more complicated. And then, sa logbook, meron din long part that you need to have your mentor's requirement. So, your mentor is equal to the owner or yung pinaka big boss nyo sa company nyo. Kala ko kasi before kapag mentor, like kahit sinong architect lang doon sa workplace nyo. Pero hindi, kailangan yung may are or at least like head ganon. So you need to request a copy of their PRCID, PTR, Ayapoa Certificate, and their CTC. So like may annex sa likod ng logbook, tas dun mo lang siya i-insert in yung mga requirements. And then may part din doon na affidavit, tas Pwedeng ikaw na mismo yung mag-fill up nun kasi mga sariling information mo lang din naman yun. Like, your name, kung saan ka nag-work, kung kailan ka nag-work, ganyan. Tapos para at least yung mentor mo, magsasign na lang siya, gano'n. And then yung affidavit as well as yun nga, yung pages kung saan nakalagay yung mentor requirements mo, kailangan niyang mag-sign and seal. So, ayun. Yung seal, I think kahit one time lang. Tapos yung sign is tatlong signs. Yun yung for his or her requirements. Tapos kailangan din niya i-sign and seal every single page nung logbook mo. Like, kung sa mo nilista yung mga activities mo. Tapos, yung affidavit din pala, once na pa-sign and seal mo na siya doon sa mentor mo, you need to have it notarized. So, punta ka lang sa any law office na may notary, ganyan. Tadi lang naman yun. <laughs> By the way, your mentor's requirements, pwede mo naman siya i-request doon sa office mo. Like, ah, si Kasuhin naman din talaga siya ng admin. Sanay naman sila doon since alam naman nila na yun yung mga requirements for the board exam. And make sure na once nakuha mo na yun, ipa-photocopy mo na rin na at least two extra copies para lang din sure ka ganun. Basta make photocopies of everything, guys. It's very important as an adult. <laughs> also, if you worked at more than one company during your apprenticeship, you're gonna need to get the requirements of all your previous mentors then. So, kunwari, sa tatlong company ka nag-work during your apprenticeship, then tatlong, ano, pages for your mentor's requirements na hiwa-hiwalay and pati yung affidavit. And lastly, kapag, okay, kompleto ka na ng requirements, meron ka ng photocopies of everything, kompleto na logbook mo, ganyan, ready ka na, ready ka na to apply for the board examination. Doon kayo sa Larry's website, magbubook ng appointment, and my advice is to book as early as possible. Like, if start ng pasahan nyo is April, ganon, try mo na, na ma-accomplish lahat 
ng yun by April pa lang. Really, for all these requirements, the best tip that I could give is na asikasuhin niya siya as early as possible, guys. Mahirap yung naghahabol. Asikasuhin niya na talaga siya kasi mahirap na may nakalimutan ka palang requirement, ganun. Tapos kailangan mo na magpasa kasi very crucial din talaga yung requirements eh para makapag-take ka ng board exam. Kasi syempre, hindi ka nila papayagan mag-take ng boards if hindi ka nagpasa or if biglang may incomplete, ganyan. Really make sure nyo na nakompleto lahat ng requirements nyo as early as possible. But guys, that is it for this video. Hopefully, nakatulong naman ito sa inyong mag-take ng board exams. Good luck, guys. Kaya kaya nyo yan. just ko. Basta complete your requirements nyo nakapag-aral na kayo. Napanan nyo na yung mga previous videos ko about board exam din. Papasa kayo. <laughs> Ayun, I'll also be linking down below. Yun nga yung Google Drive link of how I organize my logbook as well as other articles that help me para malaman kung ano yung mga requirements na kailangan. So yeah, that is it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe and also don't forget to click on the notification bell to be updated whenever I post a new video. Comment down below what video you want to see next and I hope to see you next time. Bye!